king who would rather have been a poet a psychon of a once wealthy dynasty who would rather have been a mystic so goes the description of the last mogal emperor bahadur shah zafar in professor pramod nayar's the trial of bahadur shah zafar today let us know about the life and times of the last mogal emperor bahadur shah zafar Bahadur Shah Zafar or Bahadur Shah the second who was born as Mirza Abu Zafar Sirajuddin Muhammad was born on 24th October 1775 he was the 12th and the last Mughal emperor of India he was the second son and successor to his father Akbar the second upon the death of Akbar the second on 28th September 1837 he became the Mughal emperor Zafar's father Akbar the second had been imprisoned by the British. He was not his father's preferred choice on his successor. One of Akbar the second's queens, Mumtaz Begum, pressured him to declare her son Mirza Jahangir as one of his successor. However, the East India Company exiled Jahangir after he attacked their resident in the Red Fort, paving way for Zafar to assume the throne. He was a titular emperor as the Mughal Empire existed in name only and his authority was limited only to the walled city of Old Delhi that is Shah Jahan Abad. Bahadur Shah Zafar ruled over the Mughal Empire that had by early 19th century been reduced to the old city of Delhi and the surrounding territory as far as Palam the Maratha empire had bought an end to the Mughal empire in the deccan during the 18th century and the regions of india formerly under mughal rule had either been absorbed by the marathas or had declared independence and became smaller kingdoms the marathas installed shah alam the second in the throne in 1772 under the protection of maratha general mahadaji shinde and maintained suzerainty over the mughal affairs in delhi the east india company became the dominant political and military power in mid 19th century india Outside the region controlled by the company hundreds of kingdoms principalities fragmented their land the emperor was respected by the company who provided him with a pension the emperor permitted the company to collect taxes from delhi and maintain a military force in it zafar never had any interest in state craft or had any imperial ambition After the Indian Rebellion of 1857 the British exiled him from Delhi Bahadur Shah Zafar was also a noted Urdu poet having written a number of Urdu ghazals while some part of his opus was lost and destroyed during the Indian Rebellion of 1857 a large collection did survive and was compiled into Kuliyat I Zafar the court that he maintained was home to several prolific Urdu writers including Mirza Ghalib Dag Mumin and Zok after the defeat of 1857 he said as long as there remains the scent of iman in the hearts of our gazis so long shall the sword of hindustan flash before the throne of london as the indian rebellion of 1857 spread sipai regiments reached the mughal court at delhi because of zafar's neutral views on religions many indian kings and regiments accepted and declared him as the emperor of india on 12th may 1857 zafar held his first formal audience in several years it was attended by several sepoys who were described as treating him familiarly or disrespectfully when the sepoys first arrived at bahadur shah zafar's court he asked them why they had come to join him because he had no means of maintaining them bahadur shah zafar's conduct was in decisive however he yielded to the demands of the sepoys when he was told that they would not be able to win against the east india company without him on 16 may sepoys and palace servants killed for 52 europeans who were prisoners of the palace and who were discovered hiding in the city the executions took place under a peepal tree in front of the palace despite zafar's protest the aim of the executors who were not the supporters of zafar was to implicate him in the killing once he had joined them bahadur shah zafar took ownership for all the actions of mutineers 
तो डिसमेड बाय दी लूटिंग एंड डिसऑर्डर ही गेव इज पब्लिक सपोर्ट टू द रेबोलियन इट वॉज डेटा बिलीव दैट बहादुर शाह जफर वॉज नॉट डायरेक्टली रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द मैसेकर बट दैट ही मे हैव बीन एबल टू प्रिवेंट इट एंड ही वॉज देफो कंसिडर्ड अ कंसेंटिक पार्टी ड्यूरिंग हिस्स ट्रायल द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ द सिटी एंड इट्स न्यू ऑक्यूपिंग आर्मी वॉज डिस्क्राइब एज कैटिक एंड ट्रेबल सम विच फंक्शन हैप अजार्डली द एम्पर नॉमिनेटेड हिज एल्डेस्ट सन मिर्जा मुगल एज द कमांडर इन चीफ ऑफ हिस्स फोर्सेज हावर मिर्जा Mughal had little military experience and was rejected by sepoys. The sepoys did not have any commander since each regiment refused to accept orders from someone other than their own officers. Mirza Mughal's administration extended no further than the city. Outside Gujar herders began leaving their own trolls on traffic and it became increasingly difficult to feed the city. During the siege of Delhi when the victory of the British became certain Zafar took refuge at Himayun's tomb in an area that was then at the outskirts of Delhi. Company forces led by Major William Hudson surrounded the tomb and Zafar was captured on 28th September 1857. The next day Hudson shot his sons Mirza Mughal and Mirza Kher Sultan and his grandson Mirza Abu Bakr under his own authority at Kuni Darwaza near the Delhi gate and declared Delhi to be captured. Bahadur Shah Zafar himself was taken to his wife's haveli where he was treated disrespectfully by his captors when brought news of executions of his son and grandson the former emperor was described as being so shocked and depressed that he was unable to react Bahadur Shah Zafar had four wives and numerous concubines he had 22 sons and he had at least 32 daughters many individuals claim to be descendants of bahadur shah safar living in places throughout india such as hyderabad aurangabad delhi bhopal kolkata bihar and bangalore however the claims are often disputed the trial was a consequence of sepoy mutiny and lasted for 41 days It had 19 hearings, 21 witnesses and over 100 documents in Persian, Urdu with English translation. They were produced in the court. At first the trial was suggested to be held at Calcutta, but instead Red Fort in Delhi was selected for trial. It was the first case to be tried at Red Fort. Zafar was tried and charged on four counts: aiding and abetting the mutinies of the troops, encouraging and assisting diverse persons in waging war against British government. assuming a sovereignty of hindustan causing and being accessory to murder of christians on 20th day of the trial bahadur shah zafar defended himself against these charges bahadur shah in his defense stated that his complete helplessness before the will of sepoys the sepoys apparently used to affix his seat on empty envelopes the contents of which he had was absolutely unaware of While the emperor may have been overstating his importance before the sepoys the fact remains that sepoys had felt powerful enough to dictate terms to anybody the 82 year old poet king was harassed by mutineers and was neither inclined to nor capable of providing any leader any real leadership despite this he was the primary accused in the trial for rebellion Hakim Asnullah Khan, Zafar's most trusted confidant and both his prime minister and personal physician, had insisted that Zafar did not involve himself in rebellion and had surrounded himself to the British. But when Zafar ultimately did this, Hakim Asnullah Khan betrayed him by providing evidence against him at the trial in return for a pardon for himself. Respecting Hudson's guarantee on his surrender, Zafar was not sentenced to death but exiled to Rangoon, Burma. His wife Zeenat Mahal and some of the remaining members of the family accompanied him. At 4 a.m. on 7 October 1858, Zafar along with his wife's two remaining sons began a journey towards Rangoon in bullock carts escorted by night lancers under the command of Lieutenant Omini. Bahadur Shah Zafar was a devout Sufi. He was regarded as a Sufi feer and used to accept pupils. The newspaper Delhi Urdu Akbar described him as one of the leading saints of the age approved of by the divine court. Before his accession, he lived like a poor scholar and derivish, differing from his three royal brothers Mirza Jahangir, Salim and Bahadur. In 1828, a decade before he succeeded the throne, 
Major Archer said Zafar is a man of spare figure stature a plainly apparel almost approaching to meanness his appearance is that of a indigent munshi or teacher of languages as a poet Zafar imbibed the highest subtleties of mystic sufi teaching he was also a believer of magical and superstitious side of orthodox sufism like many of his followers he believed that his position as both a sufi fir and emperor gave him spiritual powers the emperor had a staunch belief in tawis or charms a courtier of fees miracle workers and hindu astrologers were always in touch with the emperor On their advice he would sacrifice buffaloes camels buried eggs arrested alleged black magicians or a ring that cured his indigestion he also donated cows to poor elephants to the sufi shrines horses to the khadims or clergy of jama masjid in one of his verses safa explicitly stated that both hinduism and islam shared the same essence this philosophy was implemented by his court which embodied a multicultural cosmopolitan hindu islamic mughal culture In 1862 at the age of 87 he had reportedly acquired some illness in october his condition deteriorated he was spoon fed on broth but he found that difficult to by 3rd november on 6th november the british commissioner h n davis recorded that zafar is evidently sinking from pure destitute and paralysis in the region of his throat to prepare for his death davis commanded for the collection of lime and brick and a spot where and a spot was selected at the back of zafar's enclosure for his burial zafar died on february 7th november 1862 at 5 am zafar was buried at 4 pm near shweda gon pagoda road yangon The shrine of Bahadur Shah Zafar Dargah was built there after the recovery of his tomb on 16 February 1991. Davis commenting on Zafar described his life to be very uncertain.